Welcome back to Hardball. We're back with the 39th president of the United States, Jimmy Carter. His new book is called Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. And president Carter, why did you use the word apartheid in the book's title? Well, let's look at the entire title, if you don't mind. The first word is Palestine, which involves the land that belongs to the Palestinians, not the Israelis. And that belongs to the Palestinians. And that belongs to the Palestinians, not the Israelis. Not the Israelis. I didn't refer to Israel because there's no semblance of anything relating to apartheid within the nation of Israel. And I also emphasize the word not, uh, that is peace and not apartheid. That's what I hope to accomplish with this book, is so move toward that goal. But there's no doubt that within the occupied territories, Palestinian land, that there is a horrendous example of apartheid. The uh, occupation of Palestinian land, the confiscation of that land that doesn't belong to Israel, the building of settlements on it, the colonization of that land, and then the connection of those isolated but multiple settlements, more than 200 of them, with each other by highways, on which Palestinians can't travel, and quite often where Palestinians cannot even cross. <clears throat> so the persecution of the Palestinians now under the occupying territories, is in a, under the occupation forces, is one of the worst examples of human rights deprivation that I know. And uh, I think even, it's... Even worse, though, than a place like Rwanda? Yes, I think, yes. You mean it's, now? Yes. Yeah, 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 I think... The impression now of the Israelis, of the Palestinians by the Israelis, is worse than a situation in Africa like the oppression of Rwandas and the, uh, and the Civil War? I, I'm not going back into ancient history about Rwanda, but right now, the, the persecution of the Palestinians is one of the worst examples of human rights abuse I know, because the Palestinians... But you're talking are, about right now. You're not talking about, say, I'm not talking about ancient history. Ago. No. Well, oh, Rwanda wasn't ancient history. It was just a few years ago. You, you can talk about Iran, Rwanda if you want to. I want to talk about okay. Palestine. Uh, what, what is being done to the Palestinians now is horrendous in their own territory by the occupying powers, which is Israel. <clears throat> They've taken away all the basic human rights of the Palestinians, as was done in South Africa against the blacks. And I make it very plain in this book that the uh, apartheid is not based on racism, as it was in South Africa, but it's based on the desire of a minority of Israelis to acquire land that belongs to the Palestinians and to retain that land and then to exclude the Palestinians from their own property and subjugate them so that they can't arouse and demonstrate their disapproval of being robbed of their own property. That's what's happening in, in the West Bank and, and the people in this country, in America, never know about this, they never discuss this, there's no debate about it, there's no criticism of Israel in this country, and in, other, in Israel, there's a, there is an intense debate about the issues in this book. In I this will, country, no. I agree. I mean, I wish we had that sort of debate that they're having in Israel, I wish we had that in the United States, but give us a sort of sense, how much of the responsibility for the conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, do you think belongs to the Israelis for their tactics like seizing land and occupying territory that didn't belong to them? How much of it is the responsibility of the Palestinians for their suicide terror attacks and their bombings within Israel proper? Well, as a matter of fact, the, the basic cause of the conflict is a sustained occupation of other people's land by the Israelis. As a matter of fact, the, the basic cause of the conflict is a sustained occupation of other people's land by the Israelis. And in this is a direct violation of United Nations resolutions. And in this is a direct violation of United Nations resolutions. And in this is a direct violation of United Nations resolutions. It's a direct violation of the International Quartet's roadmap. It's a direct violation of the commitments that leaders of, of Israel have made in the past at Camp David when I was president and in Oslo promising that Israel would withdraw from occupied territories. They have failed to do so. In response to that, and I'm not excusing them, there have been acts of violence. As a matter of fact, though, Hamas, the number one accused persons of, uh, of violence, have not committed uh, an act of suicide bombing that caused an Israeli life now since the August of 2004.